Welcome back to the channel guys. In today's video, we're going to be going over Mill Creek OHV Trail Loop. Everything you need to know, it's in Ozark National Forest in Arkansas, one of the more popular off-road trails. Before I show you some footage of the full trip we did recently, I wanted to throw in this flashback from last fall. We started on the trails and it was after a heavy rain and we popped a tire right at the beginning. You can see here that the tire is completely flat. We were able to plug that up, however, get it aired up and get it on the trailer. So that was a blessing. And considering that the trail is considered moderately challenging, we didn't want to ride it with a plug. So we went ahead, put that back on the trailer and just used the two other joiners to get around for the day. I have been able to ride these trails both in a two seater and the four seater and we'll say that the two-seaters just have so much more mobility on these trails. There's been one or two times whenever you're in that four-seater where you're almost high center or you're going on a corner and you have to do a two-point, three-point turn just to get around. That being said, we have seen a Jeep on these trails, so it can be done. When you first arrive to Mill Creek, there's going to be a couple different spots where you can park the trailer and unload. And for those people who need to have a ramp to unload, you're in luck, there is an unloading ramp for ATVs and dirt bikes that you could pull up, load, and then you just make sure that you move to let other people use that ramp as well. And they do have a bathroom as well. It's one of those bathrooms that you're only going to want to use it if you absolutely have to use it. And looking at the footage we're looking at now, we did come in the fall, so it was a little bit colder. We all bundled up. There's a little bit of a wind chill, of course, anytime you're on the ATV. Of course, as you can tell, there was a decent amount of elevation gain on this loop, so we were mainly in first and second gear, so wind chill really wasn't that big of a factor for us. The footage from this trip was also after a heavy rain, so some of the trail was washed out. It was good to see last time that we went on the footage you're about to see that they did do a lot of dirt work, so they were working on the trails, they are maintained, and of course there's a map there, once you get there you could look at the map, see what trails you want to do. I believe we stayed on the blue trail, and as you can look at the tree there, you can see the little blue trail markings. When you're planning this trip, you consider how much rain there's been in the past week or two, because that's going to affect how muddy the trails are going to be for you. Now, jumping to the footage of our trip we just took this summer, you can see we have the Toyota Tacoma and the Toyota Tundra hauling the toys. Whenever I was looking at the information on all trails, it said the best times to go are March through August. This trip happened to be in the middle of August. If you did plan to do the entire loop, the full length of that loop is 49.5 miles. Now, the total elevation gain is going to be 7,260 feet because you are going to be climbing up a mountain. Whenever you do get to the top of the mountain, there is a nice spot to park and see a good overlook, see some of the mountains from the top. This is a OHV ATV trail, so it's recommended that you don't do any hiking while you're here. And for people who want to keep the fun going, there is a few connecting ATV trails along on this path. If you wanted to take those, test those out, and ride all day, I would make sure that you're planning things out on a map so you don't get lost. There is going to be spots on this trail where you're not going to have any phone signal, so I would recommend downloading all of your off-road maps before so you don't run into any issues. And with your phone connection being a little bit shaky out there in the mountains, if you have a group like this and you want to stay in communication, I would recommend bringing walkie-talkies. That way if you need to stop or if you need help, you can reach out. And for the people that wanted to take their dog off-roading, you are allowed, you'll just have to have them on a leash. And for the footage you're going to be looking at today, we went to the overlook and back. We didn't do the full 49 miles. This place has to be one of our favorite places to off-road in Arkansas. Pretty much the entire family loved it, except for maybe one sister who ended up walking up some of the steeper parts. She was riding in the joiner in front of us, so I really didn't get much footage of it, unfortunately, but I do have a small clip here in a minute. Now, looking at all trails again, it does have a 4.0 rating, so it has a lot of 5 stars, a few 4 stars, and of course, a couple 1, 2, and 3. Someone did mention it was a little tight for the Forerunner. Another comment reads, they saw two waterfalls that were perfect to cool off in. Just make sure you have a map. I saw one five star saying he had a great time. He had to patch his tire because his tire got stuck and hit a rock. 
Now that's exactly what happened to us on our first trip. We hit a sharp rock, popped a tire. So make sure you have all the appropriate recovery gear. And there's going to be some optional bigger mud holes that you can choose to go through if you want. I would recommend only going through those if you have a winch or something that can pull yourself out if you do happen to get stuck. There is a day use fee of $3 and I believe you can pay that online beforehand. And if not, they do have an information board that has a self pay station as well. You're also not able to do any camping on the trailhead. Now looking at a PDF from the US Department of Agriculture, they do have some recommendations themselves of checking the weather first, make sure you bring a map or a GPS and a lot of drinking water, have a first aid kit and a fire extinguisher, they tell you to stay on the March trail and don't do any cross trails and do not trespass on any private property. Now, if you've made it this far in the video, be sure to smash that like button. If you're considering going, go ahead and share this video with some of the friends that you'd like to go with. And if you have any questions, drop those in the comments below. Now, be sure to stick around to the end of this video so you can see the full trail and the overlook at the end. You'll also be able to see that quick clip of my sister running beside the ATV going up the trail. This trip here, of course, was with my full family, so that's always fun being able to be outdoors with them. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Mm -hmm.